My name is Linda Campbell, and I am with the Equitable Detroit Coalition and Detroit People's Platform. Uh, for those of you who have uh, worked with us in the past, you know that the Equitable Detroit Coalition is a citywide coalition, including about 25 organizations across the city. We formed in 2013 for this very reason, because there was lots of development happening in the city of Detroit. There were lots of public money going to support the development, and many residents believe that we were not benefiting from our public investment. And so we were formed to fight for the voice of residents in these very development projects, especially when public money is on the table. And so we're here today to talk to you and give you a pretty critical analysis about the project that's headed to your neighborhood. Now, of course, we know we cannot stop the project, but what we want to do is give you some ideas and some uh, uh, tools that you can use to critique the project and to demand more for your public dollar. So just being honest with you, that's our purpose. We're organizers. The Detroit People's Platform and Equitable Detroit Coalition, we've been organizing across the city of Detroit to win policies that benefit everyday Detroiters, like affordable housing, improved and low-cost transit fares, better use of our dollars for COVID relief, and the Community Benefit Agreement Ordinance, which we'll talk to, about to you later. So in exchange for your public investment, for your tax dollars, what kind of benefits would you like to see in the community? What do you think this community deserves for its investment? That doesn't get talked about a lot. It's the taxpayer investment in these benefits, and we need to show up like investors. So. Uh, I want to start by just giving an overview of the project to give folks a sense of the scale and size uh, and footprint of this development. Um, so just to start with a brief um, history background, and you, uh, Eagle had talked about some of this already. Uh, the site yes opened in 1927. What I want to highlight here is that this plant opened, right? This factory opened 100 years ago, and we are still dealing with right the environmental contamination impacts of it. What does this mean for this project moving forward for the next 100 years? Uh, AMC, like you said, in the 1950s took over uh, the plant, uh, took over the headquarters and used it as a research and development facility. Uh, it closed uh, in 2009 when Chrysler filed for bankruptcy. Uh, the land they then took it over uh, in about 2013 um, and transferred it to the city of Detroit in 2018 in exchange for other properties. Uh, which brings us to, to, to now. Uh, the property, yes, was traded, transferred to North Point Development. Um, the norm, number that we have reported is for $5.9 million. I've heard uh, a, a different figure. Um, one thing I do want to highlight is that North Point Development is active in the city as a developer. They have two other projects, the Cadillac Stamping Plant and also the Eastland Mall. They have already received about $25 million in just brownfield tiffs alone. Um, uh, they plan to, of course, demolish the site, as you heard, uh, and build a... Uh, uh, no, go back and build a new heavy uh, industrial facility. Uh, what was reported it will be an automotive uh, part supplier, something of that sort. Um, and uh, the, the project is coming in at around $66 million. Next slide. Right, so just to give us a sense of, like I said before, the size and scale and the footprint of this, no, go back. To give us a, a sense of the, the size and the scale of this, this project is about 60 acres. The total land site, um, the boundaries of the, the development site itself, two facilities will be built with a combined square footage of 728,000 square feet. Um, go to the next slide. That is, just to put this in real terms to give a people a sense of what that really means, that's about three and a half Ford fields. So this is a huge, right, development. This is a huge project, a huge footprint, right, um, in the backyard of District 7. Next slide.